Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel. We're going to be talking today about how to be much more efficient with your irons. I'm not talking about the classic stop going over the top. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that talks about hand path, head path, shoulders rotating on the wrong plane, coming across the golf ball, face open the path, all those terms that we hear all of the time. And there's also videos out there, loads of videos about pure your iron shots, never miss strike an iron shot again, all these kind of taglines on the understanding of hitting down. However, different golfers swing at different speeds. And for the golfers that swing at different speeds, they need to understand not just to hit down, but how much do they need to hit down? Because depending on how much you do or don't, you can leave an awful lot of efficient flight and also to a certain extent distance out there by just not understanding how much you do and do not need to with whatever swing speed you have. I'm gonna do three sets of swings, one at my normal speed, one at a medium speed, and one at a slow swing speed. And I've also got the JPX 923 4s in my hands. Why have I got this one? Because it's 30 degrees. Why have I got a 30 degree head? Well, because most seven irons range between 34 and 27, 26 degrees. And so 30 is bang in the middle. And if you've got an iron which is slightly one side or the other, at least you can make the correlative difference when you start tweaking loft around a bit more. So let's go get on a hole and let's go see what difference it makes when you hit down at a certain amount, at a certain speed, and how much performance you're leaving on the table. Similar is now on, we are at La Holla Pines hole three. It's a par three of 160 yards. I might move the tees around dependent, obviously for distance, etc. We're on a cliff face, so it might go down the cliff. So I'm going to swing first of all, around about 80 or so miles an hour as a medium. Now we're talking obviously 90 plus being the top end, 70-ish lower being the lower end and 80 kind of being in the middle. A normal-ish swing, but 80 or so hopefully miles an hour. Seventy nine. We'll take that. Good result. We'll take that as well. Three point three down. I saw there. Three point three down, and we are talking decent strike, which is good. Decent delivery. One hundred and fifty eight yards, going twenty five point five yards in the air, and forty three degrees ascent angle. So it's basically stopping um, on any green within reason. Forty five is perfect number, but anything really between forty and forty five is going to stop. But that's at 3.3 down. So that's a nominal amount down um, for an 80 mile an hour swing, 79 miles an hour. As a general rule, the faster you go, the more down you can be. So let's just now do down. Let's see if we can keep speed at around about 80 miles an hour. We've got 26 yards in the air and 43 degrees ascent angle to see if we can say not beat, but at least understand the difference. So more down now. 82.2, so too fast. It was too fast, I will admit. So it should go further. So slightly healy, <laughs> slightly healy. That's what happens when you mess around with speed and delivery, uh, but still half decent. We are talking about it's uh, at target, 2.3 yards offline. It's gone 14.7 yards in the air, 14.7, and it's 31 degrees descent angle. 30, yeah, that's, that's not stopping on any green. Even if I hit it more in the middle, that's still not stopping on any green. And that's actually lost a little bit of yardage because it's now going in like that. And that's at 82 miles an hour and I swung a little bit quick. So the faster you go, obviously, the longer that ball stays on that launch angle because of more speed until gravity has the effect. So me swinging a little bit quick is actually an unfair advantage to the down. Right, let's go do the same speed, hopefully, around about 80 miles an hour, but then hit less down. These are a little bit more difficult, but less down. Yep, thin that. <laughs> I hit that so low on the face. That's very close to the hole. Um, that's actually in between the first two. That's seven mil low, I could definitely feel that. Uh, 2.7 down, so I could even go down to 1.7 or so, but that's 26 yards in the air and 44 degrees ascent angle. That is the best ascent angle yet. And bear in mind, I one, thinned it, which is gonna put it in lower anyway, and then two, I wanted to hit less down than 2.7. So you can already see, I've still got quite a bit of room before I get down one degree, I wouldn't wanna go any more than one degree. But if we can keep it anything between one and two degrees, then that's already gonna go in higher. And as you can see, 
it's because I thinned it as well, you're not gonna get the transfer of efficiency that you would do, and it will gonna go longer. So what we can see here, even at 80 miles an hour, and what speed was that, 81, that by hitting down, actually is the worst thing you can do for functionality and also distance. The one that I hit down on, the most down, is actually carried the shortest and is gonna chase through the back of the green. That's never gonna stop on any green. Yet the first one and the last one, the normal hit, and then also the high one, even though I thinned it, <laughs> is actually much, much more functional. Right, so let's now go to 90 miles now. Let's go to my full speed and we'll do the same kind of idea. And then we're gonna go down to 70 miles an hour and do the same idea then to see how much difference angle attack makes to that. Okay, so data set is now changed. Don't worry about whatever it pops up on the screen. I've just chose a any data set with a different color. And these are gonna go over the back. Absolutely, they're gonna go over the back. So there's no point in me doing my normal 91 or so miles an hour at my normal angle attack. You know what that is, you've seen it before. So let's just do two different ones. The main one, how far you hit down, and the other one is how you can hit shallower to hit the golf ball higher. Now, for my speed, 91 miles an hour or so, it makes less difference, and I'll show you what I mean. So I think, was it nine degrees or so down we hit? The, it was eight, eight, nine degrees. So let's just sort of do something similar with this, but faster. Seven degrees, not quite so much. As you can see, ball is going much further out the back. That may not stop. So yeah, seven degrees, so I could do a bit with more uh, angle attack down. Good strike, no worries for that. But that's going 47 degrees descent angle. That's still stopping even at seven down. Yeah, so if I hit eight or nine down, that's gonna get closer to 45 degrees, but it's still gonna stop. And if I swing, again, I'm not, oh, putt. Uh, I'm not fully, fully warmed up. We are talking about that that's gonna go even higher, even at more de uh, degrees cent angle because the ball's just gonna come off the face faster because I'm swinging faster. And if we do something similar, if we go the other way and hit the golf ball up higher at my normal speed. There you can see. Don't go down the back. I might be there for a while if that's, I'll let that thing do its biz. <laughs> I can see on quad already, that's gonna hit something. Hey, there we go. Uh, so strikes a bit better, eight mil heel still, but delivery's good. Um, 0.9 uh, down on the tack angle. 40 yards in the air, 51 degrees ascent angle, 177, yeah. So within reason, I'm only a couple of yards short of my down one, downward hit. But that is much, or as functional really as the down one because I've got speed. Now, let's go slower. Let's go 70 miles an hour if I can. And let's go see the importance now of understanding just how much down you need to hit or not when you take speed right off. Okay, so change the data sets again so we get a different color line. We always like different color lines. And again, ignore, well, I think I put it to exactly what this golf club is, so the data set will come up, but ignore it anyway. Right, so let's just do now the 70 miles an hour as best we can. And let's go first of all do the down. Should we go do the down first? Let's just go fairly heavily down. Now I see down quite a bit. It's in too much down. And it does drive a little bit from you know the steepness. People get steep and then drop, drop the golf club down on the golf ball. It does happen quite a lot. I have seen double digits down quite often. I've also seen people shallow as well, but I'm saying it does happen. So you need to be aware of how much down you hit. So let's just do, if we can, 70 miles an hour as best we can, but down hit uh, angle attack. Okay, 70.7, we got a good one. There we go. Cool, it landed on the front edge as well. So again, good strike, four mil high, that's nothing. Path slightly from the inside, face is zero, that's what happens when I go slower. Um, but we're 13.9, <laughs> 13.9. Yeah, 13.9 yards in the air, 14 yards in the air, 32.4 degrees ascent angle. That really is not stopping very well. That is not functional. That's going 136 yards, which is not bad, carry. So let's now flick it to the other way. Let's try and go 70 miles an hour as best we can do, 70.7 last one. But let's just now try to manage that angle of attack. I wonder how many times it will take me to do this. Oh, 
So 71.7, there we go. So 71.7, so within one mile an hour of the other one, strike was good, face was actually fractionally open, which would then cause it to be a little bit less efficient anyway. But we're now 23 yards in the air, 23 and 43 degrees descent angle. As you saw, stopped much, much better. Now, I don't know what the difference was between the carry. I'll grab a quick look. There you go, with the powers of editing. 136 to 139, so I've, I've gained three yards. But you're gonna say, well, you swung one mile an hour quicker. You're right, I did, and there is the three yards, let's be honest. So you're gonna gain marginally from the difference in understanding of angle attack. You will potentially gain if you even go in slower, but the big gain you're gonna get is the difference between descent angles and peak heights of the two. You can distinctly tell, I'll get the information up on the screen. What happens when you go downward angle attack, how not high that goes, and then obviously how that comes into a green. That comes into a green like a ballistic missile, and effectively it's just gonna run potentially straight through. You have to have a very long green, or you have to be extremely lucky by pitching it early and then running it on. In the summertime though, when the ground gets harder, anything comes into those greens at a properly shallow angle is gonna be disappearing out the back. And you can see by the difference when you put the angle attack slightly less down, we are up two degrees on that last one. So we've still got another degree or so to go, which will give us a little bit more peak height and then even more descent angle, possibly gain maybe one or two yards as well. There'll be a marginal difference in, uh, in carry distance gains potential, but there's gonna be a massive difference in how much you can control the golf ball going into the green. That's the biggest win when understanding angle attack. The faster you go, the more down you can get away with hitting because you're gonna be propelling that golf ball Yes, at a lower launch angle, absolutely you are, but you're gonna be hitting it so hard that ball is gonna stay on that lower launch angle for longer before gravity has an effect, which means it's climbing, 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 and then it will then stall and then fall out of the sky. You're still gonna get a really good descent angle and it's still gonna stop into a green, as long as you have speed. As soon as you start taking speed off, you need to be aware of how much down you're hitting. Now that can come across from obviously poor swing dynamics by swinging across and stuff like that. Don't get confused with a lot of YouTube information out there that basically says hit down at the golf ball, hit down at the golf ball, hit down at the golf ball. Yes, you do need to. We don't want to be hitting up. That's the main thing. You never want to be hitting up. If you hit up, you hit the ground possibly beforehand, or if you miss the ground, you come up and thin it. Two problems, same result. Two results, one problem. Kind of get the idea. Slow swing speed player, less angle attack is preferable. It is safer if you hit more down, yes it will be, but then you are gonna penalize yourself massively in control the other end. Now, okay, if you're gonna use irons, I would always suggest to go at something like hybrids as quick as you possibly can do. And there are manufacturers now, uh, Mizuno do them, Ping do them, Taylor May do them to a certain extent of high launch options, which gives you help getting that golf ball up in the air as soon as you start taking uh, swing speed off. Also, there's more manufacturers now that do hybrids only throughout the whole entire set. And for slow swing speed players, absolutely that is a win all day long. And then also for high handicap golfers who use the face a lot using hybrid heads is going to be definitely much more functional and more fun to use. So, hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up, go on, you should like it so do I. Down there, it's important, there's a subscribe button and it's free and it's great for the channel if you could subscribe, so thank you. And next to that is a bell icon, that is a notification bell. If you click that one, that will notify you next time I upload another video. So hope you well, we'll see you again soon.